Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head to Belgium once again and this is a brewery who you saw me review quite recently actually but it's been a while since I've done anything from this particular range that they do. So we're going to go back to Erpvelde which is very close, it's just to the north of Ghent actually but very very close to the Netherlands border and we're having a taste of another beer from Brauerei van Steenbergen and this one is another member of their Golden Drac range. So this one is the Golden Drac Imperial Stout coming in at 12% ABV and from what I understand this is a limited edition but we got it in Sweden through the small partiers in Seistenbolaga on the 1st of February 2019. So it should be a really quite interesting beer this. I'm very very curious to see what this one uh, kind of comes out as. From what I remember the other two Golden Drac beers are the you know the regular Golden Drac which if I remember correctly was a triple and they also had the Golden Drac 9000 which was a quadruple and uh, I've always enjoyed the quads and the triples from Belgium. Probably my favourite Belgian beer styles along with the, the Belgian blonde as well and a Belgian stout I've had a couple of these but not all that many so very curious to see how this one turns out because this is a brewery that I know would do some pretty damn good stuff so I'm very curious to see what they can throw up in this particular style so very much looking forward to this review and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one so anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brown Ivan Steenberger before. No doubt I will add some more in the near future from the different ranges. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brauerei van Steenberger then. So Bra the history of Brauerei Steenberger actually goes back to the year 1784. And the brewery, as I mentioned to you earlier, is located in Erfeld and it was founded by Jean Baptiste de Bruin under the name De Pierre. So following his death, his wife Angelina Patronella Shelfo continued the brewery and she in turn passed it on to her cousin Josef Shelfo who had assisted her in the brewery for many years and he was very familiar with the art of brewing. But his daughter Marguerite married Paul van Steenberger who was a professor of microbiology at the Ghent Brewing School. So Paul van Steenberger took charge of the brewery following the end of the First World War and he changed the name of the brewery to, Bra uh, to Brewery Bio after the beer was introduced after the, that particular beer had been introduced at that time but he was very interested in politics and he served as the mayor of Erfvelde and as a senator as well and he was a real businessman and launched several other beers during his tenure such as the Bio's Flemish Bourgogne which was an old kind of brown ale and also the Leuterbock which was a lager beer and he also made major investments within the brewery including a new brewing hall, new tanks and he initiated the switch from wooden barrels to glass bottles actually when it came to selling the beer and in truth Paul's instinct as a businessman in many ways outweighed his passion for brewing and he put the brewery into a cooperation as a means to cut costs for the company but all this time his wife Margaret had uh, been with their son Josef van Steenberg and she saw this as a bit of a sellout having inherited the brewery from her father however Josef had inherited her passion for brewing and when when his father died in 1962, Josef took over the management of the brewery and focused the brewery on the production of high fermentation beers. But like his father before, he was passionate about politics and he only fully focused on the brewery at the age of 64 after service as mayor and uh, as a senator in the Belgian parliament as well. And this ended in 1978. But he got rid of the malt house and the hop plantations planted by his grandfather Josef Schelfo and decided to actually instead focus on the brewery, uh, on actually the brewing side of things. And he decided that the the brewery would purchase all of its raw materials but with very very strict specifications. So in 1978 the company also acquired the recipe for the beer that the Augustin Friars had brewed. This is the Augustin 
beers, and I've reviewed one of those for you before, but they had brewed this in their Ghent Monastery, which was in which was then fine-tuned, and this beer was actually re released again in 1982, and he also completed the range of high fermentation beers as well. Upon launching the range, though, there wasn't strong demand for high percentage beers. However, since 2000, the market's kind of turned round a lot in Belgium, apparently, and it's shown a clearly increase in demand for speciality beers, and thanks to this, this brewery has once again started to really kind of thrive and grow. But in 1990, Joseph's son Paul took over the company and he modernised the brewery building into a fully automated brewing hall, a computerised barrel filling installation, a water purification installation as well, and also a new bottling installation as well, and also a steam plant that uses natural gas. But he was joined by his cousin Jeff Vercele and he expanded the company's uh, export market as well, mainly to the US, the Netherlands, and also to Italy as well. But the brewery's main brands of beer that they do now are Golden Drac, Pirat and also the Augustine range and um, yeah that's the main kind of history if you like of, uh, of Brauerei van Steenberg but the name go the, the Golden Drac beers also have their own little bit of history as well so the name Golden Drac comes from the Gilded Dragon statue on top of the Belfry in Ghent and it's said that this Gilded Dragon first featured on the prow of a ship of the Norwegian king Sigrid Magnusson who left on crusade in the year 1111 but he offered the statue to the Emperor of Constantinople Istanbul in modern English of course and he to put a stop to the Hagia Sophia but a, hundred, a few hundred years later the famous Flemish Count Baldwin the Ninth brought the dragon to Bruges, and after the Beverhood Battle in 1382, the dragon was then taken by the Ghent inhabitants and placed atop of the belfry to protect the city. So this is where the name Golden Drac comes from. It's basically named after um, uh, a statue that was on the bow of an old Norwegian ship. So very, very cool story, actually. I'm not sure if it's... Um, it's uh, you know if it's a bit of a legend or if it is actually true. It did say it is. It basically said on the website that it is said. This is what um, where it comes from. But yeah, very very cool story this one. And I do like this about some of these local breweries in Belgium and in Germany and in the Czech Republic as well. They all take a little bit of locality into their um, into their names of their beers and stuff like this. But yeah, this brewery I would say are fairly prominent. They're known for the Pirat beers, also the um, the Golden Drax of course, and the Augustine beers. So, um, yeah, you know, you've probably seen these beers at some point. If you shop anywhere in a good beer store that has a good supply of Belgian beers, you will no doubt have come across these. I really like both the other Golden Drac beers and very, very curious, as I said earlier, to see what this one has in store. This one, from what I understand, is a limited edition uh, and it was released just this year, from what I understand, or 2018, sorry. But we get, we got this one through uh, St. Stenbol Agat's Small Partiers on the 1st of February 2019. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about uh, Brauerei van Steenberg. A little bit of a kind of longer history for you compared to others, but you can check out the brewery website in the description below, and of course, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram as well. But let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. So as, I can, as you can see, lovely artwork in this one. Kind of similar actually to the 9000, the artwork on the 9000, if I remember correctly. There you can see the Brauerei van Steenberg symbol there, if I'm pronouncing that correct. That might be Brauer van Steenberg, I'm not quite sure. But there you can see Golden Drac on the bottle cap as well. This bottle cap, from what I remember, is different from the other ones that I've seen from this brewery. But really nicely presented and, uh, you know, it comes in at 12% ABV. It says on the back here, Golden Drac Imperial Stout is a limited edition brew from the noble line of Golden Drac beers, a beer characterised by its deep dark colour and dry delicious bitterness so yeah I think this one will be very very nice so without further ado then let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting here so yeah nice little bit of smoke on the opening a little bit of the bubbles do seem to want to escape here but we'll get it out and into the glasses I always say with the Belgian beers because of the conditioning of them you have to be very careful when you pour them because they can have a little bit of a habit of um, of kind of having kind of crazy heads and stuff. So if you ever have Belgian beers, do be very very careful when you pour these ones. But yeah, um, you can smell some lovely sort of chocolatey and, and yeasty notes coming out of this one. Belgian beer, of course, is very very yeast focused. It's all about the fermentation process rather than the kind of brewing. Uh, the you know the ingredients and stuff like the German ones are. are, are Brewing Belgian beer is a completely different ball game from the German breweries, of course. But as I said earlier, I've not reviewed too many Belgian stouts. The last one I think I maybe reviewed for you was the Chopper Stout 
from uh, Six Degrees North in Scotland, a Belgian style brewery that they have in Scotland and that was pretty nice. I've really not reviewed all that many different Belgian stouts. But as you can see with this beer, it's poured pretty much as you would expect from any stout. It's a lovely um, dark um, ebony kind of rosewood colour. If you shine this one up to the light, it actually has a very nice kind of ruby tint to it as well. Um, I'm not sure how well that's showing up on the camera, but really if you stick the light through this beer, you're going to immediately see uh, a lovely ruby tint to it as well. Just get rid of the brewery notes while we're doing the tasting of this uh, of this beer as well. But it looks absolutely lovely. Quick one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of that head there. Incidentally, the head was about a three quarter finger of a frothy. I would say kind of medium. Uh, beige head on this one. It's actually got a little bit of an almost tan quality to it around the, the edge of the glass there but you know overall there's nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider that it's a stout although like I say if you hold it up to the light it's got a lovely kind of ruby tint to it almost kind of similar to the uh, the German Doppelbox in a way actually you know in terms of appearance you maybe could say that this one is a little bit more akin to uh, a German Doppelbock but as you're moving this beer around you can smell some of these lovely almost leathery notes kind of uh, coming out of the, the aroma of this one but let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this beer Oh, that smells absolutely lovely so straight away you know, you can pick up that big Belgian yeasty quality out of this one. As I always say, Belgian beer is all about the yeast. And that's one of the things, you know, the Czech beers are all these, is all about how you can play with the lager beer. The German beers are all about smoothness and drinking. The Belgian beers are all about the kind of yeasty qualities. Straight away with this beer, you can smell that lovely, doughy, bready, yeasty quality kind of coming out of this one. Um, and it's quite interesting when you put it into a stout because you can pick up a little bit of the roasty black malt backbone in there. There's some nice kind of chocolatey malts with um with this beer as well you can smell it's it's a kind of interesting balance it's almost like a little bit of a slightly charred milk chocolate you can pick out the more kind of lactosey milky notes to this one but you can also pick out some of the kind of charred um cocoa qualities to this one as well which is very very nice but yeah there's a lot of kind of brown sugary notes coming out in this as well that's definitely more like a kind of it's a bit of a kind of treacly note or molasses as the americans would say just so we're getting all of the descriptors right there but yeah it's got a really nice treacly molasses note to this one as well it's actually quite strong it's kind of like it reminds me a little bit of the um you know when you sort of caramelize sugar like that and that's one of the things you can actually do when you're brewing beer if you let the brew last a little bit longer you almost kind of caramelize the sugars a little bit and it can actually make your beer darker in color as well a little home brewing technique there that you can use and I think the way that the brown sugars are coming out in this beer, I would wonder if they've used a little bit of a longer brew there. I actually can't remember offhand if it's convention to use a longer brew for a, a big stout beer or something like this. But to me, the brown sugars in this one come across as very nice and toasted. They do have a sweet edge to them as well, but it's quite a kind of caramelised um, brown sugar in there too, which is very, very nice. I love how, how the, the brown sugary notes are coming out of this one. But as I was mentioning earlier, with this beer, to me... I was saying leathery earlier, there maybe is a little touch of that, but to me, it's the brown sugars are really dominating this one. There's a little bit of a woody, kind of nutty quality um, to this beer as well. I think it leans more towards the kind of nutty side of things. If I had to pr place, you know, pralines or uh, macadamias or something like this, I would struggle with that, but it does have... Uh, just, you know, to be a bit kind of vague on that, it does have a nice kind of nutty quality to it, this beer. Um, I have heard some people talking about Belgian stouts having a sort of tobacco-y quality to them, and you can pick that up a little bit from this beer. It really does have a little bit of an almost kind of, a, like, tobacco things, you know, things you roll cigarettes with. I've never touched a cigarette in my life right enough, but I have to admit, I do like the actual smell of tobacco. Um, but you can really pick up the, um, you can definitely pick up the nice kind of that that nice aroma there tobacco you know even though it's horrible for you it does actually have quite a nice kind of sweet aroma to it and you can pick that up in this beer quite readily it's got a lovely kind of woody nutty aroma to it and tobacco is kind of mixing in with that as well um it's a very kind of infused big aroma this and you get the same from the belgian quads if you like um and sometimes from the tripels as well but i would say more of the quads the belgian stout aroma is definitely a bit more akin to the quads and it does almost smell. There is a slight touch of licorice 
to this one as well, and I've got very, very good at picking up licorice since I've moved here to uh, to Sweden. You know, the Scandinavians absolutely love licorice, and um, you can just smell a little bit of that licorice quality um, in this beer as well. You know, this is one I can see why they would want to import this through Seistan Blanc, because the Swedes, if it's got licorice in it, they absolutely love it. So, um, yeah, lovely aroma to this beer. In terms of the hoppy side of things, you can pick up a little bit of earthiness to this beer. Um, definitely a little bit of earthiness. I'll be assuming it's Belgian hops and Belgian hops are interesting because they've got a little bit of the earthy herbal quality of English hops but they do have some of the noble qualities of German hops too. A very very interesting um, combination of things in Belgium. I'd love to try a few different uh, you know, Belgian just single hopped beers and get more used to that. That's a project for the future but on top of that a nice little bit of red fruit. You know, you've almost got a kind of raisiny sharpness to this one. There is a bit of that slightly juicier figgy quality to it as well. But yeah, there's so much going on in the aroma of this one. I've spent a few minutes just talking about the aroma of this. But there's a hell of a lot going on in it. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But we're going to try this one now. And I'm pretty, very, very curious about this now, considering how much is going on in the aroma here. But let's have a taste of this. So this one is the Golden Drac Imperial Stout, coming in at 12% ABV, a Belgian-style stout beer from Brauer Ivan Steenberger in Erdvelde in uh, the Netherlands, not too far away from Ghent and from the Dutch border. Let's get stuck into this one then. Slange, Skull, Sante, Proust. Oh yeah. I'll say straight away, that's a nice beer. To be honest with you though, I wouldn't expect any less because you know, Brauerei van Steenberger, maybe that name isn't so well known, but the, you know, Golden Drac, Pirat, you know, their brands, uh, their, their sort of lines of beer that they do are very, very well known, and you wouldn't expect them to release a bad beer. I had a little quick look at the rate beer rating for this one, and it said, it, I think it had an 83 overall and then a 17 within the style, you know, and this is one of the things, rate beer, as I always say, it can be a good barometer, but in some cases it falls down, and for me, in this case, the, the the rate beer rating is a lot of it's a lot of shite basically for this one. Um, this is a this is a really nice beer. And straight away, you know, the Belgian stouts. And um, as I say, it's a style I'm not overly familiar with, but I think it's one you know I really enjoy reviewing them for you when I get the chance. And I'm glad that I was able to um, to get this one for you. So kudos to Stey Stempelagat for choosing this beer as one of their ones to put out. It's a lovely beer, this. And if you like stouts, then you know have a go at this one. And I will say, it's a bit of a monster, you know, 12%. But as is always the case with the Belgian beers, it still somehow retains a, a level of drinkability to it. Um, but yeah, where to start with this one? You know, it's got a hell of a lot of stuff going on in it. So with this beer, you can feel there's just a little tiny bit of a roasty black malty backbone. That kind of forms the very kind of backbone of the beer. On top of that you get these nice bready doughy notes and they start to come out a little bit more the further into the aftertaste you go. Um, it's got a lovely kind of bready doughy quality to it this one, you know that typical Belgian yeasty quality and it's a little bit more of a kind of brown bready doughy yeast, almost a little bit more akin to the um, to the quads if you like. It has a little bit of that almost quadruple quality to it this beer. But at the same time, the roasty black malt just kind of makes it that little bit different. In the very centre of your palate, there's a lovely kind of um, brown sugary quality to this one as well. It's not quite as dark and caramelised as I was thinking it would be from the aroma. It's definitely a little bit lighter and kind of sweet. But at the same time, it does have a little toasty element to it. It's more like a kind of toasty... Um, sweet caramel that's coming out of this one and you can feel that the further into um, the aftertaste that you go with this beer it does become gradually more and more sweet but that nice sweet quality right in the center of the palate is, uh, is very very nice with this one but yeah this is a it's just a beautiful beer this I really like how everything is, is going together in this. Um, and you know, it does it wouldn't be out of place this in the, the Golden Drag line. It's a bit of a shame that it's only a limited edition. I would hope that if this beer's popular enough they would consider 
adding it to the regular brews because it's it's really nice and I mean it makes me very curious you do get a couple of scotch ales Belgian brewed scotch ales if they can produce this as an imperial stout I'd love to see them do uh, a scotch ale in this golden drack line because I remember the the the, the regular Golden Drac, the Tripel being very good and the, the 9000, the Quadrupel being very nice and if they can produce a stout like this it'd be interesting to see what they could do with uh, with a Scotch Ale as well I think that would be an awesome, awesome project for them but yeah, there's a lot going on in the in the flavour of this beer this is a really, really complex one, this for me and um, when you move a little bit further forward on the centre of your palate there's definitely an element of a woody quality to this one, some nutty notes in there as well. Um, I'm not sure, the, the tobacco-y um, aroma that I was picking up, I'm not sure that's quite as well reflected in the flavour. I think for me, um, but then again, to be honest, I wouldn't know what the taste of tobacco is like, which is a fair point. Um, the, it does have a really nice woody quality to it, and the wood again is something that comes out a little bit more the further into the aftertaste you go. The nutty flavours are kind of sitting more, if you go to the very centre of your palate and then just move in a straight line further forward, the nutty flavours to this in this one are coming out um, just at that kind of point in your tongue, just behind the part where you'll to take the fruity parts of the beer. But it's, it's lovely how everything goes together in this one, it's all about how these different flavours kind of fit together. The one thing we've not really talked about a little bit I think is the the chocolatey notes in this one. The the chocolatey flavours are kind of coming out if you go um, just out to the edge of that almost oily bubble you've got in the centre of your palate where you've got the caramelly notes. If you just go out from that a little bit the sort of chocolatey flavours are just sitting there and it's kind of somewhere in the middle. I would guess the, the, the chocolatey quality, it's maybe around the sort of 60% cocoa, you can pick up a little bit of the more milky notes out of it, but you can also pick up a little bit of the, the kind of more slightly, almost like a charred chocolate as well, it's got a little bit of a, a kind of balance between the, the two different types of chocolate flavour in this, but the way that the malt base and the kind of yeasty flavours are coming out in this beer is absolutely beautiful, this is one of the more I mean the quadruple is very is, is quite a complex beer, but I think this these Belgian stouts are even more complex than that, and this is why I always uh, enjoy reviewing them because they do make you think, and that's what you want. You know, when you've reviewed about sixteen hundred beers, this is the kind of thing that you actually really quite like doing, or at least I quite like doing when it comes to doing beer reviews. You get stuff like this, which is just beautiful. Yeah. It's just such a nice beer, this one. Um, the licorice notes that I was picking up, is, although that was very mild in the aroma, not getting so much of that in the flavour. There is a little tiny hint of it the further you go into the aftertaste, and it's kind of towards the front part of the palate there, which is quite interesting. It might well be some of the Belgian beers can get this almost kind of medicinal quality. I've always found it with the Belgian Bruins. They've got this little bit of medicinal quality, which comes from the phenols, and there's maybe a little bit of a touch of that in this beer. But on the hoppy side of things then, in the back corners of the palate you've got a nice, quite light earthiness but it does add a little bit more kind of dimension to the beer. It builds a good bridge between the woody qualities and the nutty qualities in the hoppy side of the beer. So a little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate then, as you come further forward that smooths out. A little bit of a herbal kind of quality there. Uh, as well, which is quite nice. As I mentioned, Belgian hops have a little bit of that slightly more English earthiness and a little bit of the herbal quality as well, but they've also got a little bit of the lighter, kind of more floral things from the noble hops, and you kind of feel that change in the back corners of the palate. It's more of a kind of Englishy hop quality. Then, as you get towards the front corners of the palate, it becomes a little bit more like a slightly floral Germ German quality to the hoppiness, but then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's just a little bit lighter and grassy, as I said. Behind the front curve of the tongue, you've got a nice little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And as I mentioned earlier, it's got a little bit of that almost cakey, phenolic quality to it, this one. And yeah, it's got a really nice red fruity quality to it in there. It's almost got a little bit of a, it's definitely a little bit of a figgy note that bases this one, but then it's got an almost kind of cough syrupy quality to it. You can pick out that there is a little bit of a raisiny sharpness to it. But the further you go into the aftertaste, the more it becomes like a kind of medicinal, kind of boozy cake sort of thing. Maybe it's got dates, I think it's more prunes, uh, dates and prunes I think. 
are a good descriptor of the way the fruity notes are coming out in this beer. And then right on the very tip of the palate, you get a little bit of a kind of candied red fruit ester as well. So it's almost like a little heart shape, those little heart shaped sweets that you get in the Harry Bo Star Mix as well. Um, and as you can see, as with the length of time that it's taken me to describe what's going on in this beer, I'm sure you're getting the idea of just kind of how complex this one is. To me, this is a beautiful beer and it's one of the more challenging reviews I think that I've done over the last little while. So I really hope that you guys have kind of enjoyed this one, even though I've rambled on a little bit. But um, yeah, it's a beautiful beer this one and as I say, I'd really like to review some more Belgian stouts. So in the comments section below, please do give me some more recommendations and I'll see what I can do in terms of reviewing more of these beers because this one it's just absolutely lovely. And I think one thing I will say, it'll be a terrible shame if Brower Ivan Steenberg only brew this beer once. Make it a regular range or at least a seasonal or something like that because they've done a pretty damn good job of this. And then ignore the um, ignore the rate beer rating for this one. It's a load of shite. This is an awesome, awesome beer and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. Although that said, it's definitely not one of the ones you are going to session. But it's a beautiful beer. And if you like your sweet stouts, if you're more an American stout drinker and you like the sweet stouts, I think this is one that you will quite enjoy. If we talk about the stout spectrum, for me, this is definitely leaning more towards the sweet side of things when it comes to the Imperial Stout. In terms of the mouthfeel end of this beer, um, I would say... Yeah, definitely a full-bodied beer. I don't think we're going to get away from that. With it being a Belgian beer... The carbonation is a little bit more active in it than you would be than you would be used to if you're particularly used to American stouts and stuff like that. So the carbonation is a little bit more active in this one. It does have a little tiny touch of crispness to it, in fairness, but the mouthfeel overall leans towards the oily side of things. You've got a lovely big malty sweetness to this one, although in fairness you do get a little bit of a more kind of dry or woody nutty quality the further into the aftertaste you go and some of the toasty brown sugars start to dry the, the middle of your palate out a little bit more. The yeast obviously is contributing to that as well. A little bit of a kind of hoppy bitterness to this one but I think you'd be lucky to get more than 30 or 40 IBUs out of this one. I think 30 might even be a push for this beer to be honest but a lovely juicy fruity quality to it as well and it's just a very very well balanced beer that's very very complex as well. So if that's your sort of thing I think you really will enjoy this one. But I think we should leave it at that for this review. This is just a beautiful, beautiful beer. Leans a little bit more towards the sweeter side of things in terms of Imperial Stouts, as I said. And um, it's just... Uh, try this one for yourself and just see how you get on. It really is one of my... It's probably one of my favourite beers I've reviewed over the last little while so I'd love to review a few more Belgian stouts for you on the channel so yeah let's leave it at that for this one this one is the Golden Drag Imperial Stout coming in at 12% from Brauer van Steenberger in Erkvelde in the Netherlands a beautiful beer and one that I definitely recommend that you try so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from Brauer van Steenberger as well do give me some other Belgian stout recommendations and I'm sure I'll return and uh, I'll return to both uh, Brown Ivan Steinberg as well and the Belgian Stout style in the future but make sure you try this one it is available in Sweden at the moment so order it up through Seisten Blanca but thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon make sure you check out my social media and I'll catch you guys again very soon the Golden Drag Imperial Stout from Brown Ivan Steinberg in Erdfelde in uh, Flanders in the Netherlands until the next time Slange is now and I'll catch you guys later Slange, Skull, Proust, Santé